Hey, it's Ted here. I'm back in my post barn, getting ready to start doing videos again. Busy fall, busy winter. Uh, just got a wood stove going in my post barn here so I can start working on my drives. Um, I've got an alpha one here that I'm putting together for the boat out back. You know, I've done the engine removal, transom assembly. Should have the transom assembly rebuilt back in March, something like that. So I wanted to go over the upper gear case. We did some of the lower rebuilding the water pump. I wanted to show you how to do some seal work on this. This is uh, kind of a DIY video here for you guys at home. You need only a couple tools. One of the things is um, a, the seal installer, which is important for the upper shaft and the uh, early models. It goes bad a lot and uh, exhaust tears it up. I'm going to show you a couple things what to look for. So if you're taking the upper off the lower unit, you flip it upside down and I'm going to show you what to look for, how to change that seal and some of the things to look for if your engine overheats. Let's get going. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do was point out in the service manual is the earlier model drives. This is an RMR Alpha 1 early generation, not Gen 2. And when you take the upper gear case off the lower unit, you're going to see that there's this plastic pocket that's up inside the case. And there's a copper tube that goes between there. On a Gen 2, that tube is usually plastic. Early models was copper. Um, one noticeable thing you'll see is there is a visible plastic housing with four quarter inch bolts that hold this housing in a gasket in place. I'll show it to you when I flip it upside down. So then what happens is as the exhaust comes down here, the water is supposed to come with it. And if there's no water, it melts this plastic pocket, which melts that grommet. So now when water is trying to get driven up here by the water pump, which probably has failed, then this just lets the water out. So if you just take the drive apart and you split the case and you find the water pump's no good and you change the impeller and everything looks good and you did not flip this drive upside down, then you're going to find out that the engine still overheats even with a good water pump. So this is kind of what I wanted to look at. And the other thing I wanted to look at was the actual seal that's up inside the case. Coming down through the shaft, which is shown up here, is the seal. There's two seals in an early model. One is installed from the top, the other is installed from the bottom. And just because it's a double seal, one is on the outside that prevents the exhaust gases from getting up inside the housing, and the other one keeps the gear lube out. So I'm going to show you how to inspect this and also to change that lower seal when you flip the drive upside down. Two big things to think about. When you split a gear case and you're going to look at it, you're going to change the water pump, flip the gear case, the upper gear case upside down and look at it. And I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to flip the case upside down and we're going to look at the water pocket inside where that water tube goes into and inspect that. And then what we're going to look at is we're going to look at that seal that we're going to change, which you can change with a couple of basic tools. So let's take a look. So again, this is the upper gear case upside down, your mounting bolts, and here's the oil passageway. This is very critical. Remember when you put this back together, there will be a double O-ring. It looks like a double lip seal, little one that fits in the lower unit in a little case, and that seals that oil from the lower unit to the upper gear case. So do not forget to change that. Here's that water tube. It's a copper one, so I can take that out and show that to you. So here's that copper tube. You want to inspect that, take that out, take a look at it. If it's if it's a drive you've never looked at, somebody might have gone in there and damaged this tube. Um, it's just a good idea to look at it, make sure it's not all corroded and damaged. And then it fits into that grommet. And I'm going to zoom in on that grommet down there and that water pocket down here. We want to look at that real quick with a flashlight. And with a, with a camera, it's really nice. We can zoom in on it. And the other thing is the seal. And that seal is the one that I said you can change. And simply what you can do, there goes my flashlight. What you can do is you can reach through the housing down here with a screwdriver and you pop it out. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to zoom in right now. And let's see if we can see what it looks like as I zoom in. 
So you get a, a good idea what you're looking at. Now, I've already popped that seal out, so there's no um, issue with me doing the video, but I wanted to make sure that you can see that grommet right here and that housing, those four bolts. If the engine overheats, what happens is the exhaust comes into this cavity and it surrounds the shaft and everything. And if there's your water pump fails, it will heat up this plastic housing. And I've actually seen this housing melt. And you can actually see where that grommet looks like right now. The one that I have has a little bit of distortion, maybe a little crack. And let me zoom in a little more. I'm going to see if I can zoom in. Yep, it's got a little split in it right there. So I need to change that grommet. That grommet has already started to fail. There's a little dry rot crack here. And that comes in a water pump kit. So it's really important. Now, there's two recesses in this housing. When you take the grommet out, it's got little tabs that stick out. And they will fit in. You can reach in through here with your hand pretty readily. You don't have to take the grommet out. I can fit my hand down in here. You can't really see, but I can fit my hand down in here real easy. It's big. And then I can put a little, um, you know, lubricant on there and squeeze it in there and get that grommet back in. Um, that's something that comes in a full water pump kit. Here's the seal that we're going to change. So basically what I would do, I'm going to zoom out. Come on, zoom out. There we go. And I would reach through, because of through the exhaust cavity here with my screwdriver, I'm gonna put my screwdriver in here under the seal. I'm gonna catch the seal, and I'm just gonna give it a little pry. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna pop that seal right out. So now that's the portion where you can see the drive shaft, and that, that's where the drive shaft is. I'm gonna move the camera just a little bit here so you can see that a little bit better now in front of that is another seal which you'd have to take the whole gear case apart and why i'm stressing this is because that seal protects the shaft and that upper drive shaft from exhaust gases if it does overheat from going past this seal and hitting the oil seal behind it and if it if you do not change the seal when it fails, then exhaust gases will get in there and it'll tear that upper seal out. Now gear lube leaks out and the upper gear case fails. It's not the best design, obviously, but if you do the maintenance, and that's what we always did, and we still do on these kind of drives, is when you take the lower unit off, you flip the gear case upside down and you look in here, you wanna know. Is that water pump pocket got damage? Is it exhaust gases have gotten in here? Is it, has it melted it? Has the engine overheated? Is there a reason for us to go in here? Well, realistically, anytime you take this apart, I'm gonna take this and flip it upside down and look at it in here. I'm probably gonna change that seal because it's probably got, you know, age on it. So let's look at how you change that seal. That's the next thing. The pocket looks good. I have to change the grom, and I'm going to do that before I put it back together. But I'm going to show you how to change that seal next. Okay, first thing is I want to look at is the difference between these two gear cases. So I have a Gen 2, and I have the early model here. So right away, you're going to see in the diagram, if you have an early model, you have that water pocket. And there's that copper tube. If you have a Gen 2... It's not totally square on the top, and I'll look, take a look at that real quick. I'm going to take the Gen 2 book and put it right over the top here for you. All right, so now here's the Gen 2. Now, the other thing about the Gen 2 is you have the plastic tube, and it's got a little angle to it, and there is no pocket. There's just the actual grommet that goes up inside the housing. So that's a major change in the upper gear case for a Gen 2 drive. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at this area, but we also want to look at that seal. Now, that seal is here in your book is number 14. And that's the part that we're going to change. That's the seal I popped out. So you can see that that's that seal right there and the actual sealing ring has actually come apart. It just becomes unglued, it's typical, totally normal, but 
If you don't change it, it allows the exhaust gases to go up towards the next seal, which is the seal that you have to take out and you have to take the upper gear case apart. So let's look at the, uh, the parts. All right, the book makes it pretty straightforward. It looks like it's easy to take the four bolts out that are down inside that housing and take this out in your hand. The only problem is those bolts are down inside the housing and they're down probably, I don't know, nine, 10 inches. If you have a housing that's all melted and you have to get in there and chisel it out, it's, it's you know, molten plastic. At that point, I'd recommend you take it to a dealer. Don't mess around with this if, it's, if this housing has to replace. And the other reason is the bolts that hold this into the aluminum housing are stainless steel. Um, and if it's in salt water, the stainless steel bolts are probably corroded into the housing. Now, if you're in fresh water, you can try and reach in there with a, a socket and you can try and break these loose. Just, you know, wiggle them and see if you can break them loose. If you can, you can take that housing off. Salt water, we get in trouble a lot with that. So just be really careful. Now, the other thing is it shows that grommet and that grommet is the one I have to change. You know, and you'll notice that there's a hole and there's a recessed little rubber tab that sticks out of two sides. So you have to make sure you indicate it and I have to reach inside that housing and make sure I do that. It's easy to see with a good flashlight. So make sure you use a good flashlight on that. Okay, here's the tools that you need to do this. If you remove that upper gear case, it's upside down, as I just showed you, and we have this driver rod that's a special tool that Mercruiser sells, and there's this seal installer. So the two part numbers are in your book. These two thread together. You'll notice right away the diameter of the two is different. So the seal itself, right here it says, Apply Loctite A to the outside diameter of the drive shaft housing lower oil seal and install this oil seal with a lip facing the top of the housing. I'm not spraying anything in here because I don't want to hit that other seal. I want to leave that other seal alone. I'm just trying to work it around the rag a little bit. Get it a little bit cleaned up. So I got some, you know, grease and dirt out of there guys can see this so the book tells me again that I want to have this seal installer on this driver rod and I want to make sure that I install it in the correct position okay so it says the oil seal install the seal lips facing up towards the top of the housing which means down and that's the confusing part of this. So the seal lip is this way. You can see the spring. So I want to install it this way and push it on the tool so it fits that way. And I'm going to put a little drop of Loctite on here. Sing a little bit. So I just put a little bit on there. And all I need to do is reach in there and center it. Now I have to zoom in and see if I can get a better view of what I'm trying to do. And what you have to do is you have to put the seal and then slide it forward to get it in the groove. And then once it's in the groove, don't drop your light in there. I'm gonna take it back out and look in there again. It's hard to do this in the video, but there it is. In, and then you just tap them with a hammer now. So I'm going to hold that in it until that tool feels flush. That's it. There we go. We'll put them in there again. We'll take a look and there you go. Got a new seal installed. So the last thing I have to do is reach in there and grab that grommet, and that comes in a water pump kit. And um, I just take a thin blade screwdriver and I slide it in between the plastic housing and pop it off to the side, because it is rubber. You can do this real easy and pry it out. And then reach in there with a little, I put a little grease on it so it slides in there and make sure the grommet lines up and then put that in. Always put a little grease on your seal before you put it back together. Put a little grease on that grommet 
before you put that copper tube back in and then you're ready to put the upper on the lower. So that will be the next video that we'll go through. So I hope that helps you um, understand how to change that seal in an early model Alpha 1. MOR Alpha 1, not a Gen 2, um, the seal in that water pocket. Make sure that you take a look, flip that drive upside down. Even if you don't have a drive stand like this, and you know you can take it apart at least flip it upside down on a bench top and look in there with a flashlight and take a look and make sure that you can see if that water pockets melted and that seals failed um, that's something maybe at that point if you don't feel comfortable you don't have the special tools that you need to take it to a dealer and have them address that but at least you know what you're dealing with so um, hopefully that helps and we'll talk to you next time